So in previous videos, we talked about the compound focal length of two lenses. Right now, we want to talk about the back focal length, how we can calculate the back focal length and how we prove the equation for the back focal length. So let's say we have two lenses, f1, f2 at distance d. It can be even one lens that has two surfaces. And uh, right now, just let's, co let's consider two lenses. And this distance that I put x, we call it back focal length, which is the distance from the second lens to the focal point of the whole optical system. In order to actually calculate that focal points, as always, you know, for compound systems, we usually do this. We actually image the, let me change it to the pen. We image the, an object at infinity through lens f1 and then we don't consider f2 we find the position of the image and then we image that we consider it as an object for f2 and we find the focal point or you know the final image we can use this technique for multiple lenses let's say we have a lot of lenses i mean different kind of lenses anything the way that we look at it, for example, when you have an object, first you image that object through lens 1, and then you image it through lens 2, and then for lens 3, that's the way that we can actually image the whole optical system. Actually, those lines are not correct, but usually that's the way that we look at it. So image through lens 1, then lens 2, then lens 3, and then you get to the final image. So, for based on the equation that we have, for lens 2, we have an object, which we call it O2. And this is a positive value because that's a distance. It can be, for example, O2 can be 2 centimeters from here. But because it is on the right-hand side of the lens 2, we should have a negative value. I have another video about, you know, how the sign convention on the lenses. So we put negative 1 over O2 plus 1 over X. X is unknown for us, which is the final uh, position of the image so from this equation combining these two together for o2 we put this equation and then from this equation we get to this 1 over f2 is equal to and because negative we have a negative sign i change it to d minus f1 plus 1 over x now 1 over x is unknown for us so So now we have a lens that is representative of these two lenses, we call it F. And in another video, I explain how we can get to uh, that F. So this angle, this is delta, and this we know that because these two lines are parallel, this angle is also delta. So delta is equal to H2 over X, and from the same perspective, it's equal to H over F because that's a representative lens. So the representative lens, we have a beam at infinity and it's bended to the focal. Let's say we don't have these two lenses. And instead of these two lenses, we, put, we can put a representative lens and uh, it goes to focus. So we have H2 over X equal to H1 over F. Then from this equation, we can get to one over X and one over X is equal to H2 goes there. So we have H2 over h1 over h2 times 1 over f and x itself is equal to h2 over h1 times f now the main question is that what is h2 over h1 so in order to find h2 over h1 this angle is delta 1 and because these two lines are parallel these two ang this angle is also delta 1. So right now we can see that this one is h1 and this is the focal length of lens 1. So h1 over f1 is equal to h2 which is this distance over this unknown distance. But this distance is actually unknown but we know the value because we have f1 this is the total length minus d. d is the distance between these two lenses. So 
h is equal to h2 over f1 minus t so h2 over h1 is equal to f1 minus t over f1 so we have a good equation for h2 over h1 now we have h2 over h1 equal to f minus t over f1 and we have x is equal to uh, h2 over h1 times f and i proved this equation in another video so 1 over f is equal to 1 over f1 plus 1 over f2 minus d over f1 f2 so f itself is actually equal to f1 f2 over f1 plus f2 minus d so from this equation we have this coefficient h2 over h1 which is f1 minus d over f1 times from uh, this equation also we have f1 times f2 f1 plus f2 minus d so f1 cancel we get to f2 times f1 minus d plus f1 over f2 minus d so that's the final equation for back focal length of a lens so we prove this equation that you know actually when you have two curved surfaces we can use you can get the same things actually so we have f2 we have f1 and the back focal length is this equation thanks for your attention